You all asked for a full model train collection video, so good God you're getting one. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is everything I own. I have collected model trains for many years now, and I've amassed quite a collection of 00 scale models. I usually keep them all in a display case or in their original boxes, but today I pulled all of them out together for the first time ever. I line them all up here on the kitchen counter because I have absolutely no room anywhere else to line them all up at once. There are, and I shit you not, exactly 100 models here. I did not plan that. I did not even know I had that many until I laid them all out and counted them. What a perfect even number to make a collection video with. I don't collect any certain era or railway. I kind of just collect everything. My rule is basically if it's an engine I've seen in person, or is a very obscure class, or just has an awesome livery, then I'll buy it. Although I think it's pretty obvious where my bias lies. Pretty big southern fan here. So without further ado, let's get started. I've organized them into sections by region, so like all the southern engines are together, all the great western, industrials, etc. And put them in livery order from pre-grouping to preservation. We'll start with the southerners. First up is one of many Hornby Terriers. This is Stepney in his original condition in the dashing LBSCR improved engine green livery. Next is Rolvenden, another terrier. This one in the Kent and East Sussex blue. A bit dusty, probably should have dusted this guy before filming, but eh, oh well. Another terrier. This one is in the beautiful mint and chocolate LSWR livery. One of my favorite liveries. Another terrier variant. This one's Wadden in the southeastern Chatham green. Again, a real looker. Here's our first rebuilt terrier with the large marsh boiler. This is Martello in the southern olive. Next is an Isle of Wight Terrier with the longer coal bunker, named Karis Brook and in the gorgeous transitional Malachite livery. As you can tell, I kind of have a thing for Terriers. The next is Brighton Works, a Hornby exclusive. And the last Terrier is one you have all seen before. Stepney again, but in preserved condition, made using a Brighton Works. Since the last time I've shown him in a video, I have finished him and he has his name and number on his sides now. Next engine is one of my favorites, the LBSCR E4 class. This is Roehampton in the gorgeous Umber livery. Next is Birch Grove, another E4, and in the Southern Olive as she is preserved in today. Here's Birch Grove again, but in a different preservation era livery, this time in Umber with her name on her tanks. Very classy. One of my favorite engines of all time is next. This is the LBSCR H1 Atlantic La France in the gorgeous all lined out umber livery. I absolutely love the early Marsh and Ivat Atlantics. Their curves and flows are just so elegant. Probably my favorite class of steam engine out there. So naturally, I bought a second. This is the H2. This one is called South Foreland and is in Southern Olive. That concludes all the Brighton engines. Let's move on to the southwestern ones now. Here's another favorite, the Adams radial tank in a rather inaccurate neon green. Here's another radial tank. This is a later one, painted in southern olive and produced by Oxford. Here's an M7, painted in the mint and chocolate livery, as preserved today at the National Railway Museum in York. Next is an Isle of Wight O2 class, also painted up in that beautiful malachite. This one is Calborn, another preserved engine. The last southwesterner is Normandy here, the Bluebells little B4 painted in black. This is probably my least favorite model of the whole collection. It's all plastic, it has a shoddy finish, it runs terribly, and it can't pull anything. Gotta love Dapple. On to the southeastern engines. Another favorite of mine, the charming little P-Class. This is one of the preserved ones. This one's nicknamed Nettle and lives on the Bluebell Railway. And speaking of the Bluebell, here's Bluebell herself in one of the best preservation liveries that has ever existed. Love that ornate blue paint scheme in White Roof. Here's the H class with one of the shiniest domes I've ever seen on a model train. A pretty bad runner, to be honest, but makes up for it with good looks. Absolutely beautiful model. 
Here is the D-Class, one of the most gorgeous 440s I have ever seen. The final Southeasterner is the C-Class, who is again incredibly beautiful. There is no such thing as an ugly Southeastern engine, especially in this livery. That concludes the pre-grouping engines of this group. We'll get into the actual southern built engines now. First up is the King Arthur, called Excalibur, the first of this class. And beside that is the very similar looking goods variant, the S15 class. It can't be a southern collection without some sort of bullied representation. Here is Royal Mail, a merchant navy in original as-built condition. Such a striking engine. Love this one. In contrast to that is a rebuilt Merchant Navy. This one is Canadian Pacific in BR Blue, a livery the real engine only wore in this condition in preservation. And good god does it look great on her. Here's Blackmore Vale, a West Country class, sporting that Southern Malachite. And beside her is Tangjmir, a Battle of Britain class in BR Green. Last bullet of the day is the Ugly Duckling Q1 class. Britain's most successful 060. Love this guy. And rounding off all of the southern engines is the USA class dock tank, painted up in that tasteful malachite. Gotta love an American engine with buffers. One of my favorite looks. We'll move into Great Western territory now. First of the lot is the Dean Goods, dolled up in that wonderful lined out Great Western livery. Next to her is an engine you all know, City of Truro, also in the later Great Western livery. I went for this livery instead of the more commonly known earlier one with the red frames, because this is the livery she was in when I saw her in person. Decided to be a bit different. We got a couple panniers next. This is a 6400 class, basically a smaller pannier with a boiler flush with the tops of the tanks. And here's another favorite, a 5700 in London transport livery. There is just something so charming about Great Western engines in red, I don't know what it is. Here's a 1400 auto tank, which all of you will know as Oliver from Thomas. This is a DJ Models one, a pretty rare find nowadays. Next is the 1361 tank by Helgen. A beautiful model, but very fragile. Just look at this one the wrong way and a piece will break off. I really dislike handling this one, so I barely ever touch it. Another red fella. Here's a prairie tank, also in London transport livery. It just looks so right, doesn't it? Here's Nemo, I, I mean the Duke Dog, as preserved on the Bluebell Railway in BR Black. A third red fella, and it's one everyone here will know, Olton Hall, painted up as the Hogwarts Castle as in the Harry Potter films. This is a very unique model, and one of the only in my whole collection with a working headlight. Love this one. And finishing off the Great Western Clan is the King himself, King Henry III in the fetching BR Blue. This guy is pretty special to me because I actually bought him in his hometown in Swindon, in the central Hornby shop there that is now unfortunately closed. We'll take a quick break from the standard gauge and look at a couple of narrow gauge engines here. This is one of Bachman's Baldwins, called Peggy. Really nice little model here. Great runner. And here is Taw, a Linton and Barnstaple engine. Beautifully detailed and painted, but it runs like poop. Its cow catchers catch on points, it doesn't run consistently, it's overall pretty disappointing. I don't deny she looks great though. First row complete. Let's transition over here to the LMS engines now, which I only have four of. If my bias wasn't any more apparent before, it probably is now. First in the lineup is a totally custom model. This is the North London tank Cromford, as preserved on the Bluebell. 3D printed body on an Electrotran chassis. Still in the process of adding lining, but he's coming along. Next is the Jubilee class Culliper and the beautiful LMS Maroon. The only LMS livery engine I own. Shocking, I know. Here's a fun one. One of the preserved Fairburn tanks in Caledonian blue livery. From what I understand, this was a rather controversial livery. But hey, what do I care? It looks great to me. Lastly is a rebuilt Duchess, the Duchess of Gloucester in that dashing BR blue. This is one of the fun rebuilt duchesses with the sloped smoke box from when it was still streamlined. Love that look. On to the LMS's big competitor, the LNER. First of the lineup is the J72, or the E1 as it technically is in this condition, painted up in northeastern green. Next to him is a Q6, 
A big beefy engine on an 080 chassis. Super unusual looking. The brand new J27 from Oxford is next to him in lined out LNER livery. As of filming this, this is the newest model in my collection. Just received him about a week ago. Got a couple of great central engines next. This is Mons, the chunkiest 440 I think I've ever seen. Looks amazing in that great central green livery. Next is an 04, dolled up in the great central lined black livery. Another pretty rare model, and such a gorgeous one. Great Central really had some of the best pre-grouping liveries, I think. Then there's Maud. And then there's Maud. Here's Maud in her wonderful lined out North British livery. God, I love this livery. The double yellow boiler bands, the star on the smoke box, it's just so awesome. We need more Scottish engines in double O. Hear me, Hornby? Let me make that loud and clear for you. More Scottish engines. Hint, hint. Here's a rebuilt B12. Another one I probably should have dusted before filming. Whoops. And here's Emily, I, I mean the Sterling Single. This has got to be one of the most beautiful models ever produced for Double O. The detail on this thing is absolutely breathtaking. Not a cheap model by any means, but I'm so glad I didn't skip out on this one. What a surprise, another Atlantic. Here's the preserved C1 class, as can be seen at the National Railway Museum today. Here's an N2 tank, which a lot of you will probably know as Ryan from Thomas. My name is Ryan! I gotta say though, N2s wear green a hell of a lot better than they wear purple. Here's a J50 tank, one that I lined out myself. I wanted the lined one that Hornby did, but I couldn't find it online for a cheap price. So I ended up just getting a plain black one and lined it out with transfers myself one night. I did a pretty decent job, I think. Here's the first of many A1, A3 Pacifics. This is Great Northern, the first of the class, in as-built A1 condition. The best condition of these engines, if I'm honest. Next up is Flying Scotsman, but in blue. Couldn't pass up the chance to own a blue A3. Next is Galti Moore, a later condition A3 in BR Green and with smoke deflectors. Next is the kingpin of my collection, my trophy engine, my baby, my literal child. You touch this thing and your hand comes off. The USA Tour Flying Scotsman, complete with the second tender, cow catcher, and bell. I added the headlamp myself because I didn't think it looked complete without it. This is specifically the 2013 model, not the crappy 2021 with the gold plating. Seriously Hornby, what were you thinking with this? Another Flying Scotsman is next. This is the 2000s condition one in apple green with the smoke deflectors. A controversial look, but one I like. The P2 is next. This is Cock of the North. Another very weird looking engine in the collection. It wouldn't be a double O collection without a Mallard in there somewhere. Here's Mallard and her iconic garter blue livery with red wheels. Here's Kingfisher, a BR Blue A4. Maybe a hot take, but I think BR Blue is the best livery on an A4. They just wear it so well. A couple more preserved A4s here. This is Dwight D. Eisenhower. This is the one in America, so of course I had to get it. One day, Dwight, I'll see you in person. One day. Beside Dwight is Union of South Africa, the only A4 in real life I have ever ridden behind. Rest in peace, Union. You had a good run. Enjoy your long stay in Scotland. Next up is the L1 tank, the only Thompson design I own. I'm not a fan of Edward Thompson's designs, but I do think the L1s were quite nice. Nice, big, beefy tank engines. I customized this one to be number 9000, wearing the shaded LNER lettering. Here's a Peppercorn A1. This is North British in BR Blue. I don't know if you all have caught on yet, but what I'm trying to do is rack up one of every Express engine that wore this livery. BR Blue was one of my favorites. And here's the famous Tornado, the new build A1, wearing her signature apple green. Beautiful model. And that concludes all of the Northeastern engines. Let's move on to BR built ones. Here is Camelot, the Bluebell Standard 5. And beside her is the 9F Evening Star, the last steam engine in real life built by BR. Love how 9Fs look in BR green. We have a couple diesels over here, I do have a BR-08 in original black. Remind you of anyone? Beside him is a Deltic. This guy is called, and I'm probably going to butcher this, the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry. God, try saying that name three times fast. And the last one here is a 45 class. 
I obtained this planning on turning it into Spam Can from the Railway series. Haven't done it yet, but it's on the list. Over here we have a couple American engines. This little guy is one of the Pal Street cable cars in San Francisco. Charming little model. And it actually runs, believe it or not. A very super impressive streamliner next. This is the Norfolk and Western J-Class. It isn't 611, unfortunately, but close enough. And beside her is one of my favorite electric engines out there. The GG1 in the beautiful Tuscan red livery. Absolutely love the retractable pantographs on this guy. It's such a fun model. Second row complete. Scooting over to the last row now. Here we have some colorful industrial engines. First one here is the ever-beloved Peckett, number 560 in the Peckett Works Leaf Green. Another little Peckett here, this is the highly sought after Huntley and Palmer's blue one, which I got in the collector's pack complete with wagons. A beautiful little collector's pack. A third Peckett here, but this is the 060 version. This one is called Westminster, in a nice dark green livery. A fourth saddle tank, here's one of Hunslet's countless austerity 060s. The weathering on this guy is exquisite. Some of the best out-of-the-box weathering I've ever seen on a model. Here's a bar clay. This one is called Katie, and I gave her a proper weathering. And here's the big guy himself, Captain Baxter. Another fully custom model. Body shell from Shapeways and applied to a Hornby Pug chassis. This was beautifully painted up and detailed by Thomas Tank Merch on Twitter himself. One of my favorite models. Finishing off the industrials is this little Rustin shunter. Cute little boxy boy. And that completes all the engines that you guys haven't seen before. The rest of the lineup are all my custom Northwestern Railway engines. I've shown off most of these in detail before in videos, but for the hell of completion, let's go through them again. Here's my first Thomas, built using a Sparkshot E2 body on a Bachman 1F chassis. Here's my second and final Thomas, built using a Sparkshot Baby E2 body on a Dapple Terrier chassis. Here's Edward, built using a modified D16 body with a new funnel and a Bachman and class tender. Then we got Henry, which is just a stock standard Hornby Black 5 painted green. And here's Gordon, built using a Hornby A3 body and a tender from a busted Bachman B1. Here's James, the biggest mod of them all. A heavily modified Bachman J11 with the front footplate extended and a pony truck added. Here's Percy, who I just showed off last week. A GWR shunter body from Shapeways on a Hornby Pug chassis with Peckett wheels. This is Toby, a Rapido J70 painted in his colors from the books. And here we have Duck, a mainline 5700 body on a Bachman chassis painted in a brighter green more akin to the book illustrations. Next to him is Oliver, which is a standard Hornby 1400 auto tank painted in the same green to match Duck. Here's Arthur, a Bachman 2MT painted in LMS Maroon. And here's Salty, a Helgen Class 07 painted in red and weathered to hell and back. Here's Bert Spencer, or just Spencer for short, a Hornby A4 painted in white with silver lettering. And lastly, here's one I've barely shown before. This is a Bachman Class 04 and will eventually become Mavis. I tried fashioning my own custom side plates for her, but they didn't really work out, so she's just kind of been stuck on hiatus for a while. I'll get to her eventually. A lot of people ask me when I'll be adding Donald and Douglas to the collection, and the answer to that is soon. The Bachman 812s are due in the next month, and I have two on pre-order just for them. When they come, you can bet I'll make a video on them. And that, my friends, is my entire 00 collection. Oh wait, no it's not. We still got the Bachman Thomas engines. If you count these, they bring the total collection up to 117. Holy crap, that's a lot of trains. I plan on converting everything here to be prop accurate to the TV series. Some of which are complete, and some not so complete. First up is Thomas, who is complete. Heavily modified the Bachman body for this one, with beautifully accurate faces by CoolDude7208 on Twitter. Second is Edward, who is also complete, with faces by Light and Cole on Twitter. Next is Henry, who is stuck in model making purgatory. Soon Henry, soon. Here's Gordon, who is like 90% complete. I have to finish some of his lining, add coal to the tender, and give him a final coat, but he's so close to being done. His and Henry's faces were also by CoolDude7208. 
Now here's James, who is also stuck in purgatory. He's currently using a face from the Tomy toy that I cut the eyes out of. We'll definitely be replacing that in future with something better. Here's Percy, with no real modifications other than a matte coat and a tired face from a wooden railway toy. Here's Toby, with his doorways and windows cut out. Amazing how much better he looks now. Nowhere near complete though. Here's Duck, still dazed out of his mind from the last video. He is complete, but I'd like to get some new faces for him. This is just the standard Bachman one, paint it up. Next is Donald, who has real coal in the tender and a matte finish. I'm gonna completely redo him someday though, with actual handrails and the like. And here is, uh, Douglas, who is, hmm. You know, it feels like he's missing something, but I can't place my finger on it. Here's Diesel, who is complete. Matte finish, cab windows have been cut out, and with awesome faces designed by the Chairlord on Twitter. He's a good one. Then we got Bill and Ben here. Nothing special has been done to these two. I love their faces though. Next up is Mavis, who I have cut the windows out of the cab of. I contemplated using this to make my more realistic take on Mavis, since the prop is pretty dead on to a class 04, but I'll probably just leave it as a prop one. Here's Salty. Again, nothing special really done to him. He looks awesome as is. Here's Emily, again, stock standard. And lastly is Spencer, who is currently missing his front bogey. I have it in a box of spare parts. Don't worry, it's not lost. I never bothered to pick up any of the newer Bachman releases like Rosie or Oliver because frankly they just don't really interest me. But you can bet your ass though I'll be buying Daisy when she comes out. I still can't believe that they're making her. I also have the Bachman Scar Lowy and Reneus, but I unfortunately could not find them for this video. They're in a box somewhere, I just don't know. Just kidding, I found them. Actually found them as I was editing this video. Totally forgot I replaced their faces with the ones from the Ertl diecasts. So counting them, that brings the total collection number to 119 model trains. Holy cow. I hope you all enjoyed this. This was honestly a big pain in the ass to set up. It took me literally over an hour to haul everything down here, unbox everything, and line all these up. But I gotta say, it is immensely satisfying seeing everything all out in one place at once. This is the first time I've ever done this. It's quite the feeling. See you all in the next one, folks. Bye!